<laughs> Look at Goldie. I've never seen Goldie do this before. Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's 8.55 a.m. Good morning, Boo. I wanted to show you what's going on outside. I just looked out the back door and saw this. So there's the heated water bowl, and there's two doves sitting near it. When I first looked at it, I was like, are they frozen? But they appear to be moving around. At least the one on the right does. I hope they're not frozen. Maybe they're just happy sitting in the sun. They remind me of Hydrox and Ditto. I think it was like last year or the year before, after they both had passed, I kept seeing two doves in my yard, and uh, they always remind me of Hydrox and Ditto. So it's 16 degrees out right now. I'm still getting ready for my day, so I'm not going to go outside right now because my hair is still wet from the shower. But as soon as I get dressed, I will put some bird seed out. It looks like that's what they're looking for. And many of the cats downstairs are looking out the window. I don't know how many people are going to have um, a heated water bowl out in this weather, so I think the animals are thankful for that. Well, look, there's three. There's a third one near the house. Oh my gosh, imagine if the doves moved into the cat shelter because of all the straw. <laughs> imagine if a family of doves makes a home in the shelter. Like, it's honestly like a giant bird's nest in there. And <laughs> Boo's moving around, rubbing up against me. As we all know, this area of the patio has like a microclimate going on over there because when I used to do live streams and put a um, thermometer outside, it would be a super cold day, but it would be like 70 or 80 degrees in this area. That's one of the reasons why Hydrox used to love to lay in the dirt around here because it was so warm. So I'm sure that's why the birds are here also because they're getting some nice warm sunshine and this little corner is always like the warmest spot. And this past summer, I did some little microclimate experiments on the patio. So in the spring, I bought some like geraniums and marigolds and different types of plants. And I put the same exact plants in the same exact soil, because I also bought the soil, in different flower pots in different areas on the patio. And to me, it was amazing how like the geraniums grew really, really good like along the fence um, behind the greenhouse, for example. Um, they didn't really grow that great near the back door area. And the marigolds did really, really good in another area of the patio, but they didn't do that great near the fence and, you know, things like that. So it was really interesting how just by moving a flower pot like 10 feet from where it was, the plants grew completely differently which means that this patio area, I guess because of the way the sun hits it and different areas of shade and just, you know, the way the airflow is, has many different little microclimates going on. And Boo's been getting lots of pets. He wants you to know that he slept here last night. And um, so yesterday I got his bed out from storage. I got um, a few beds out from storage and I got some blankets out from storage and I was going to put them out, but then I was really kind of hesitant because I don't want to take any chances with fleas. And just in case there was like any kind of dormant flea activity on there, I put everything in the wash again. So I washed everything on hot and I put it in the dryer. So today I have to make sure it's dried then I'm going to give him his bed. But yesterday I decided that's what I'm going to do with anything that I take out of storage for the cats because it was put into storage while we had fleas and I put it straight from the dryer into storage, but I'm not taking chances. So when I take it out of storage, it's going back into the laundry and then from the laundry, I'll put it out. Right, Boo? Last night, none of the cats woke me up. It was so nice. I got such a good sleep. Right, Boo? Because Boo slept in here. 
Boo wants me to open the window a little bit, but I'm not going to do that because it will scare the doves. And look at them now. Look at where they are now. They're right outside of the cat shelter. I just opened the window like a quarter of an inch, enough to get some cold air flowing in so Boo could smell the air. Like, I could feel it where I am right now. It's so cold out. And the, um, the birds did not get scared. But I see a few more birds showing up now, so I gotta hurry up and get ready and then put some bird seed out. I just came outside and everything is covered in ice. And of course the birds flew off. I don't know where they went, but I gotta make it across the patio. Hopefully without falling because it's, it's all ice. A little bit of grip. I just put a bunch of bird seed out, so hopefully the birds will be happy and the cats will be happy because they get to watch the birds. Here's Mr. Snowman and he's showing a temperature of 28 degrees, but the air temperature is less than 20. It's about 17 degrees right now. So this is an indication of the microclimate. And if I moved him near um, the doghouse or closer to where he used to be, if he was in the sun right now, it'd be even like warmer than that. Here's the doghouse shelter and it has icicles on it, but some of the icicles are dripping. So that means the sun is warming it up and melting some of the snow. Look at what's going on here. Can you see Splash and Stella? They're smelling the air because the window's open just a tiny bit. I don't want to open the greenhouse right now because my temperature sensor says it's like in the 40s in there. But um, the geraniums are still in bloom. I don't know if you could see through the plastic. So to me, they're like my indication. When that geranium plant dies, then I know it's gotten below freezing in the greenhouse. And so far it hasn't. Yesterday for dinner, the cats had homemade chunky beef with hard boiled egg and sardines. And they all loved it. I didn't have a chance to film anything at the time, so I'm just documenting this so I remember. And they have that on the menu again later this week, so that's good that they like it. Here's Richard. The pets, Richard? Here's Ziggy. One of the really nice things about working from home is that I can adjust my schedule based on like time of day and weather with regards to cat chores. So for example, I know that the warmest part of the day is gonna be around 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. Hopefully some of the ice outside will have been melted by then. So that is a good time for me to scoop all the litter boxes, take all the litter out to the garbage and stuff like that. So that is definitely a benefit of working from home, which I would not have if I had to go sit in an office all day. Right, Ringo? Let me tell you what happened to Ringo last night. So last night, Ringo was on top of the cat tower. He was up here where Goldie is. And Sammy, this is little Eva. And and I came over to the cat tower to say hello to Ringo. Well, Sammy decided to jump up to the top like she's doing right now. This is exactly what she did, except she then started smacking Ringo around. And I wanted to pet Ringo. And that's why I was trying to say hello to him and get close to him up here because I wanted to like reach out and pet him. And Sammy was so funny because she kept smacking him like Ringo, just chill out and let her pet you. It was exactly like that. It was the weirdest thing. So he would like move to this part of the window and he would be looking like he wanted to get away. And then Sammy would come over and smack him. And then he moved to this part of the window He'd be looking like he wanted to get away and Sammy would smack him. She was literally like trying to smack some sense into him. Like, just chill out, dude. Let her pet you. Everything is going to be fine. There's Nancy. And then what happened was I backed away a little bit and Sammy saw that I was moving away. And I let Ringo jump down just like Nancy's jumping down now. And then I went and I sat on the couch and Sammy came and sat on the couch with me. Sammy is so crazy smart, like 
crazy smart. So let's see, can we pet Goldie now? Goldie's been getting like really brief pets recently and I have petted her when she's been up here before. You gonna let me pet you, Goldie? Smell my hand? Okay. No, she went up there. Let's check out these new laser toys I got for the cats. This is Nancy. Everyone has to come and smell them. I got these during the Black Friday sales back in November, and I did not open them until yesterday. I kind of forgot that I got them. And the cats had a really good time. It was just Sammy and Nancy, and I just tested the laser pointer out with them, and they really enjoyed this. So I thought I'd make a video and talk about this. It's a five-in-one laser pointer, and the reason why I purchased it is because it charges via USB. And I have another USB laser pointer somewhere in this house. I don't know where it is, though. That's why I got this. There's two in here. I figured I'll keep one upstairs, one downstairs. I have to figure out, like, a, a safe place to put them when I'm not using them so that they don't get lost. Because I don't know where the other one is. But I tried one of these for the first time yesterday, and it's, it's a really interesting laser pointer. Much different than the previous one that I had. Let me show you why. So the cap comes off the end of it and that is where it plugs in. So it plugs into a USB adapter. So that's really cool. I don't have to worry about any wires or anything. Ziggy's here and so is Sammy. And then it has, it actually has, I think it has three functions. So the first function is the laser pointer. The second function appears to be like a UV light. And then the third function is a flashlight. So those are the three functions that my previous laser pointer had. But let's put this back on the laser pointer. So this laser pointer has five different patterns. And can you see this one? It's actually a face. It's not just a dot. And then there's a butterfly. There's a switch near the front of it that you twist. And it switches to a different pointer. It's also a star and the star has a dot in the middle of it. And this one looks like a little mouse. And then the last one is just the plain dot. So we have a happy face, a butterfly, a mouse, a dot, and what was the other one? And a star. So I haven't really used a laser pointer with these guys in a long time. So I think they're going to enjoy it. What is really interesting when you have multiple cats is that some cats enjoy certain toys more than other cats do. So it'll be interesting to see who responds to the laser pointer and like who responds to which different pattern on it. Like that's Goldie, she seems to like it. And don't forget, with laser pointers, never shine it anywhere near a cat's eyes. Always keep it pointed away from their eyes. So I just wanted to film a quick review on this product. Right now, it's like my favorite laser pointer. I think it's even better than the last one that I owned. And I will put a link to this laser pointer in the description below this video and also as a pinned comment if you'd like to check it out for your cats. That's Goldie. Look at this. this is Ringo too. Look at this. So what's nice about the laser pointer versus like a wand toy, I can really get the cats to run farther with it than like the reach of a wand toy. Like they could run all the way down the room, this way. And look at this, this is Goldie. Goldie doesn't even run after wand toys. But what Goldie loves, <laughs> look, at, look at Goldie. I've never seen Goldie do this before. 
What she loves is when I take a piece of freeze dried chicken and I throw it and then she goes and gets it and she fights the other cats for it and she'll like play hockey with it. It's really interesting that her it's really interesting that her and Ringo are responding to a laser pointer better than a wand toy. That's still goldy, look. There's little Eva. There's little Eva. So little Eva, Ringo, and Goldie are not the biggest fans of wand toys. Look at that. That's Goldie. This is what Ziggy does with wand toys. Like she'll jump on the couch and go after it. Goldie never does. But she'll do it for a laser pointer. Look at that. That's little Eva. The other thing, that's Ziggy, that's Goldie. Ringo. They don't see it's on the chair. Oh, little Eva sees it. <laughs> They're all looking for it. They're like, where did it go? That's little Eva. Oh, she got scared of me. Look at all. That's Goldie. Goldie never runs like that, ever. Usually Ziggy did. Wow. Goldie's flying. That's Goldie. I don't want to run her around too much because sometimes I think she has asthma. All right, guys, good. We're going to eat now. How to amuse seven cats at once.
It's 10.30 a.m. I just let the cats up. Here's Nancy. I think she's trying to get past Stella. There's Stella. Yeah, Nancy just got past Stella. Nancy wants to go under my bed and she wants to go in the cat tower in my room. She's walking down the hall. Here's Nancy. She is trying to navigate between Stella and Boo. Boo's in the door to his room. And here's Stella near the crunchies. I hope Nancy's just trying to walk down the hall. Like the way her tail's swinging means she could have a hidden agenda. But Boo's just watching. He's just watching. Here's Nancy, here's Boo. She might want to go into Boo's room to look out the window. Now Boo's growling. If she walks past him, I'm fine with that. Boo, you want crunchies? Boo, would you like some crunchies? This is Nancy's downfall also. They both like crunchies. Boo! Who wants crunchies? Anybody want crunchies? Be nice to each other. Okay, nobody's getting crunchies. Nobody wants crunchies? Here. You want crunchies? Okay, I gave both of them some crunchies. They both have crunchies. Everybody has plenty of food, okay? You could share your food. There's crunchies for everybody, okay? Nancy wants to go to the window. Nancy, you want me to open a different window for you? Come on. Nancy, I'll open a front window. Come on. Leave him alone. I just opened another window. Come on. I just opened another window for you. Boo's in his room, and I shut the door. Come on, Nancy. There's another window open. I picked her up, and I brought her to the living room. She started, you know, wriggling out of my arms when I did that, but I got her here. There's a window open here. There's plenty of room for all the cats just to give each other their own space and not get like into each other's space. They just need to like learn that. Nancy just tried to attack Simba on top of this cat tower. He jumped off, went under the dining room table. Nancy followed him. Thankfully, my mini tambourine was on top of the table. So I picked it up and I shook it and Nancy just ran downstairs really fast. So here, Simba he just ran into my bedroom. He's on the bed. I'm going to open the window in this room a little bit now that the sun's out. Things are warming up. And yeah, I don't know what gets into Nancy sometimes, but she's downstairs and I'm really happy the tambourine works. It's much better than a spray bottle. Much better. Because I can reach her in places that a spray bottle cannot reach her. For example, when she's under the table with Simba, there's no way I'm going to be able to hit her with a spray bottle. Not that I would even want to hit her with a spray bottle. But, you know, to use it as a fight deterrent. But a tambourine can get under there because it's sound versus water. So if you're trying to keep cats from fighting, definitely get yourself a mini tambourine. It's 12.40 p.m. and here's Stella. She's been laying on this chair today, which has been kind of in my way of getting work done, but she's happy, so I've been letting her rest here. I'm making a pot of chicken broth for the cats. The local supermarket had chicken drumsticks on sale for 79 cents a pound, and I bought, I don't know, I think this is like five pounds of chicken drumsticks. So I just put them in the pot with a bunch of water, and then I'll have some really nice chicken broth to add to their meals. And I'm coming outside to give the birds some more bird seed. There's about four cats on the cat tower downstairs looking out of the window and watching the birds here, so I figured I'd give them some more food. So they had breakfast, I'll give them lunch, and then that'll be it. There's a whole bunch of bird seed. One thing I don't have this year is any peanuts. The next time I go buy bird seed, I'm gonna pick up some peanuts for the squirrels. 
but when they cut the trees down, I didn't have squirrels for a while. So I guess it's good that I saw a squirrel here the other day. It's almost 1 p.m. and it's about 62 degrees in the greenhouse right now. So I came out here to shut off the lights and the heater for a little while. I just shut them off just to give them a break. They've been running nonstop for quite some time now. It's 23 degrees out, so it's really cold out, but it is really comfortable in here. In fact, it's so comfortable that I'm gonna have to take off my jacket. I thought I would just sit out here and work for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. I have a pot of soup on the stove that I have to keep an eye on, so I don't wanna be out here too long, but it's a beautiful day. It is so nice and warm in here. It's so sunny, so why not? I moved some of my small spider plants out here the other day and I'm surprised at how well they're doing. Maybe because they're getting a lot more light here than they were inside. But look, this one is doing really well. And look, that one's doing really well also. This one not so much, so maybe I should move this over. I'll move this one over here. That's weird. The other two are doing really well. It's 3.25 p.m. Hello, Nancy. And I just got my hard drive back from data recovery, or I wanna say I got my data back from data recovery. I'm hoping that's the case. I have not opened it yet. I just got the package, kind of nervous. I've been very hopeful since I've sent it out. And I did receive an email like a week ago saying that they were able to recover my data and that they'd be sending it back to me. And this is what it's supposed to be. So. Fingers crossed, I actually can access all of the data that was stuck in that hard drive. Here's my hard drive, and I just plugged it into the computer, and I was able to open it, and it looks like all of my files are on it. I mean, I don't know if there's any missing. The vast majority of my files have been recovered. So the first thing I'm gonna do is back this up. There was just a really big cat drinking out of the water bowl outside. This is what I saw. So the cat drank from the water bowl for a while, and then it walked toward the house, which would be near the cat tower downstairs. I hope that cat is not pregnant. Look what I just found. That's little Eva and Ziggy. They're laying in this bed together. Here's Goldie. She's relaxing in this cat tower. And there's Ringo. He's in this bed on the chair. I'm gonna let them relax. It's 8.48 p.m. and here's Stella. Let me tell you what Nancy just did. So, I let Nancy up a while ago. I was cleaning up the kitchen. She was crying by the door. I said, okay, Nancy, you can come up if you want to, as long as you're good. So she was good. She was up here for a while. She was really good. Then she went back into the kitchen. She was crying, 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 crying. So I said, what do you want, Nancy? You want some pets? So I gave her a ton of pets. And as I was petting Nancy, I said, uh-oh. Nancy has a pattern of behavior where when she gets a lot of pets from me, she takes it as a sign that it's okay to attack one of the older cats. So the, so the second I stop petting her, she runs out of the kitchen. And I said, uh-oh, here we go. So I tried to grab the tambourine, but all I found were the jingle bells. And I didn't know what direction she ran in. Well, it ends up she ran into this room and I think she ran after Splash because I think I heard Splash like scream under the table. So then I shook the jingle bells really, really fast and then she ran, she ran under my bed. So then I closed the door to Boo's room to keep him out of, you know, any issues. And I got Nancy out from under the bed. All I have to do is go look under there. She runs out from under it. And then she was in the kitchen. So I said, Nancy, you want to go downstairs? So I opened the door and I jingled the bells and she ran downstairs. I don't know if she thinks it's a game or like, I don't know what goes through her mind or I don't know if she thinks that when she's getting pets, she's like, I'm the favorite and I could do whatever I want. So I'm going to go attack the other cats. Like, I have no idea what she's thinking. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but... It's definitely a pattern, so I just have to not pet her or, you know, give her any affection or anything like that when the other, when the older cats are around. I think I could do it, like, when she's downstairs with the other cats because she doesn't go and attack them. But if she's up here and I pet her and, you know, give her lots of attention, then she takes it as permission to go attack somebody. Stella says she does not like that. 
It's 7.45 a.m. and here's Boo. This is where he slept last night. Notice his bed is next to him. So I got his bed out of the laundry yesterday. I put it out here. But he likes laying in this rolled up blanket. I guess he really likes the mat and the blanket. And he was happy sleeping here. I, uh, I came over to him in the middle of the night. I gave him some pets. And yeah, he wanted to stay here. So happy boy. It is 22 degrees outside. I am definitely not happy with this weather. I believe it is going to be a cold, overcast day today with precipitation. And I don't know if we're getting freezing rain. I don't know if we're getting some snow, but I hate this weather, right, Boo? I hate winter and I hate ice and snow. Hate it. Here's Stella. Good morning, Stella. Stella got a bunch of pets this morning. She jumped on my bed. I'm going to put the toys on for her. There you go, Stella. And I'm going to clean up the coffee filters from Crunchy Time last night. That's how the cats had their crunchies on those coffee filters. Here's Simba. Good morning, Simba. Simba jumped on my bed this morning also. He got a bunch of pets. Oh, and I should say that both Simba and Stella got a few treats. They got some of the blue buffalo or blue wilderness treats. Here's Splash. Good morning, Splash. How are you today? Simba says he's ready for breakfast. It's not time for breakfast yet, Simba. Wanna go downstairs? No, oh, no. There's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Good morning, Nancy. I'm gonna clean up these plates from dinner yesterday. There's three cats looking out of the window at the birds. There was four, but Ringo just jumped down. There's Sammy, she just jumped up. Look at these two sharing this one platform. Oh, there's Ringo, he's back. See how much the cats love watching the birds from this window? If I open the back door, they don't all congregate by the back door, but they love this window. And you could see how much smaller these cats are than the original four. Because look, Ringo and Sammy are sharing a platform. Now, Ringo's about the same size as the upstairs cats. Sammy is like half their size. But look at this. We have four cats on two platforms. That would never happen with the Fab Four. Because they're just way bigger cats. <laughs> so there's five. Five of the seven are in the window. They're so funny. Look at the tails. Hey, Goldie. So it's Goldie and Eva in the top platform. Ringo and Sammy on the right. And I believe Ziggy is in the window. The key to having and managing multiple cats in a large cat family is making sure that they have things like this that will hold their attention. So whether it's a bird feeder outside in a window they can look out of, or electronic cat toys, or a certain schedule, it's really important to uh, get the cats on some kind of schedule. It's really important for a daily routine. Here's Richard. Richard, you're not looking at the birds. Richard says he was up late. He was up late. He still needs some sleep. Okay, Richard. You sleep. They're so funny. It's like stadium seating. I did not even put any bird seed out today yet. But what I did yesterday was I took one of the containers of bird seed from the garage and I brought it inside. So I only have to go outside and sprinkle bird seed and come back in. And here's Nancy. Hey Nancy. Here's Boo. He's been watching the birds from the window in his room. I only see one bird out there, so I don't understand why all those cats are so interested in one little bird. Now it's time to brush the cats. They've been playing with their electronic toys. They've been watching birds. Who's looking good. Notice his fur grew back very nicely. The only thing that I hope grows back is the fur in the back of his ears. You good, boo? 
Time to brush Stella. Remember, the more you brush your cats, the less they shed. So then you don't have as much cat hair on furniture or on rugs or on cat beds. So it's a good idea to brush cats several times a week during non-shedding season and every day during shedding season. It's not shedding season yet, but almost. All right, Simba. I'm gonna try a new trick to get Splash to let me brush him. I just shook the crunchy container, which is why Splash came running. Normally when we have crunchies, he gets a million pets. That's his petting time, like right before they get a snack. Or the other time he likes a million pets is when I'm working. Let me brush your splashy. Good boy. Good boy. Nice boy, Splash. Good job, Splashy. Good job. I don't know if you could tell, but Splash is the biggest cat. I think he's the biggest cat in the house. I'm sorry, Splash. Look at this. He really enjoys it right now. So if he thinks there's a treat at the end of this, then he lets me do it. Okay, good boy, Splashy. I'm going to put the camera down and finish. This is the tub of bird seed I got out of the garage. So these uh, containers from the freeze dried chicken breast are like great little storage containers. I never throw them away. I always use them for something. In this case, I have several of them in the garage holding bird seed because then, you know, the seed does not attract mice or rodents or anything. Um, <laughs> that's not for cats. You guys are not gonna wanna eat that. They're like, what is in there? It actually smells good. It smells like nuts and seeds. Checking it out, Simba? Okay, good. You wanna eat it? Nope. Okay, let's put some of this outside for the little birds, okay? It's cold out. I just put a bunch of seeds out. Definitely easier to just have the bird seed container here and go outside than to have to go into the garage, get it out, put it back. And thankfully, there's a lot less ice today, which is great. So, um, yeah, hopefully the birds will come back and eat. And then later on, I'll put fresh water in the water bowl. For breakfast today, the cats are having primal raw nuggets. These are chicken and salmon, and they're still quite cool. While the cats are eating, I'm checking on the greenhouse temperature, and it says that the minimum temperature last night was 42 degrees in the greenhouse, which is phenomenal considering it got down to like 15 degrees outside. Sim is done, and Splash is done. Stella's finishing up, and I don't know how much Boo ate. I know he ate the freeze-dried chicken. I don't know how much more than that he ate. So I'm gonna go downstairs and when I come back up, if he's still hungry, I'll give him some Sheba. I just came downstairs and there's still four cats watching birds through the window. Here comes Sammy. So we're back to five cats watching birds through the window. And I wanna talk about the importance of having a routine that works. And it takes kind of experimentation to find a routine that works. The reason why I feed the upstairs cats before I feed the downstairs cats is because I know that once the downstairs cats get fed, they want to come upstairs. So if I fed them first and they ate their food because they eat really fast and then they wanted to come upstairs, they would be crying and banging on the door to come upstairs while the upstairs cats are eating their food. And that is why it is better for me to feed the upstairs cats first, let them eat their food, and then feed the downstairs cats because it gives the upstairs cats some time to relax, use the litter box, you know, go wherever they want to go in the house while the downstairs cats are eating. And then when the downstairs cats are done eating, the upstairs cats are situated wherever they want to be for the day, and the downstairs cats 
then come upstairs and enjoy the upstairs. And they're not bothering the upstairs cats while the upstairs cats are eating. So always find a routine that works for you. And remember, a routine that works for you and your cats might not necessarily work for someone else. So just because you and your cats do something a certain way doesn't mean that same way is going to work for other people. There's so many different factors involved, so always keep that in mind. Okay, Sammy, let's get brushed. Let's get brushed. Time to get brushed, okay? You guys are going to get brushed. Then you're going to have some play time. And then we're going to eat, okay? Nothing came off Sammy. Here's Richard. I usually get a lot of cat hair off of Richard. I wonder if he's going to have big, thick fur like the upstairs cats. Right now, all of these cats, the Lucky Seven, have really short fur. They're definitely short-haired cats. Um, it's kind of, kind of like Boo's fur, I guess. But, um, you know, when I was brushing Splash today, I was like, you know, they're not long-haired cats, but they're definitely not short-haired cats. They're kind of like medium-haired cats. And that would be um, Stella, Splash, and Simba. Even Boo, sometimes, his hair gets long. Ziggy loves being brushed. Sploot. Splooty. Oh, look at all, look at all the cat hair coming off of her. Look, can you see that? That's Ziggy and Richard. I got a lot off of them. Where's Nancy? Nancy! Come on. Let's get brushed. Let's brush Nancy. Come on, Nancy. Come on, let's get brushed. Come on. Come on, Nancy. Look at all the loose hair on her. Ziggy wants more. Ziggy loves being brushed. Her and her brother Boo. Ziggy and Boo. Ziggy would love it if I just brushed her all day. Right, Ziggy? Okay, you wanna, you wanna bite the brush? pets instead okay these are the three that don't let me brush them <laughs> look at Goldie and there goes Sammy I wonder if I could sneak in right now while they're distracted hey Ringo Ringo says no maybe I could brush Goldie no. We're having some laser pointer games before breakfast. Who is that? Is that Goldie? Yeah, that's Goldie. There's Ringo. Ringo was chasing it a little while ago. I think that's Ziggy. Look at Nancy. Who's that, Ringo? Ringo's jumping up the stairs. Yeah. Okay, we're going to continue with our Laser pointer fun. Oh, that's little Eva.
it's weird how all the cats that don't like cat toys love the laser. So it doesn't go through the fabric, like some of the red light does go through, but not the actual laser point. just remembered that the wheels here maybe I could get someone else to use the wheel because so far it's usually just Sammy and Richard and neither of them have used it recently you guys gonna use the wheel There goes Nancy. Is she gonna use it? <laughs> Goldie just hit her. Maybe I'll put it on the wall behind it. There goes Richard. There you go. There you go. There you go. Sammy wants to see what's going on.
I think he runs and then he gets afraid of how fast he's going. Richard Aston's nose up Sammy's butt. <laughs> yeah, it's not made for two cats. Maybe I could get some of the other cats to use the wheel with the wand. I mean, with the laser. Look at this. Is little Eva going to go on it? The cats were served their breakfast. Four of them are eating. I don't know what the other three are doing, but hopefully they'll come back and eat. Goldie's super hungry. Oh my gosh, she's almost done with her meal already. Ringo's just watching from afar. These are the upstairs plates. Almost all the food is gone except for a little bit on what I think is Boo's plate. And he's not here looking for food, so I guess everyone's okay. Here's Boo. He's back in his little bed. That's his favorite spot right now. Boo has like favorite spots that he goes through. For a while, his favorite spot was on my bed. And now his favorite spot is right here on the day sofa in his room. There's Simba, he's watching birds. Here's Splash. He's on my bed. And there's Stella, she's on top of the cat tower. Yesterday I put one of the beds on top of the armoire. And I believe Simba spent part of last night in that bed. I just wanted to see if they would want a bed up there because they really like laying on the blankets up there. So we'll see if they use it or not. I dropped my camera when I was downstairs playing with the cats with the laser. And now, anytime I zoom in or zoom out, it's making a horrible noise. It's 10.15. I'm opening the door. The cats can come up if they want. So Pooh's in his room. I shut the door to give him, you know, some time to be alone. And the other three are in my room. I shut the door, gave him some time to be alone. Later on, I will open the doors. And the other reason why I shut the doors is because I need to get work done. So... Nancy's been crying, 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 so I'm giving her a churu. That's Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. This is for Nancy. Let Nancy have it. There's Sammy. Ziggy's licking it also. I want to get Nancy off as many crunchies as I can because all she wants to eat is crunchies. It's 10.30 a.m. and here's Simba. And I just checked the weather forecast and it appears that today we're not getting snow but now tomorrow we're getting snow. It's supposed to be two to four inches of snow which I'm not happy about hoping that we get less than that. But that means I need to get some other things done today that I was gonna get done tomorrow. Meanwhile, Richard and Nancy are wandering around the house, meowing at each other. They're looking for trouble, basically. It is 10.40 a.m. Nancy's been crying, so I gave her a little bit of canned food. She does not want it, so that's it. There's Richard, there's Nancy headbutting each other. They might want to go in Boo's room or they might want to go in my room, but there's food there if that's why she's crying.
I just put some dry food on it and she came back. Eat it, Nancy. That's what you wanted. Go ahead. Eat the food. That's what you wanted. Now she'll eat it. Wet food and all. It is 12.15, Sammy's been meowing for her treats, so I just gave her some treats. Ringo's having some treats too. Having nothing but computer problems, I feel like I'm getting nothing done today, so hopefully the rest of the day will go better. The cats are having homemade turkey raw food for dinner. I almost forgot to defrost it. I just took it out of the freezer. Now Sammy's getting a churu because it should keep her quiet for a while. I was just downstairs and all the plates are clean down there, so all the breakfast has been eaten. Sammy's been getting a churu in the afternoon for the past few days and it's been working to keep her quiet. So even though she had a few treats a while ago, she's still meowing and meowing and meowing at me. And that is one of the bad things about working from home is that if the cats want something, I'm accessible and they'll meow at me a million times until they get it. Whereas if I was off in my office, I would not be dealing with it. They would just have to, you know, wait till I'm home. So there's definitely trade offs. Look at what's going on here. Here's Boo. And here's Nancy. Here's Boo. And here's Nancy. If you know, you know. How you doing, Boo? How you doing, Nancy? Behaving? Here's Nancy. Hello, Nancy. And here's Richard. Hello, Richard. Here's Nancy. And here's Richard. Here's Nancy and Sammy. And Richard. Richard smelling Sammy's butt. Sammy smelling Nancy's butt. It's like a chain of butt smellers, right, Nancy? It is 4.38 p.m. I got home a little while ago, and I did some cat chores, scooped the litter and everything. And today I purchased some bird seed and some peanuts. I got everything on sale, but it was still pretty expensive. The bag of peanuts was $5, which I didn't think was too bad. But the bags of bird seed were like $12 and $14 for bird seed. So um, anyway, I got them. I figured they'll last a while. And I went out into the garage and I got these empty containers from the freeze-dried chicken breasts that the cats have been eating. I have a bunch of empty containers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own birdseed blend with some birdseed from each bag and some peanuts. And I'll fill these up. Hopefully I'll have enough of these containers to um, use all this birdseed. And then I'll put these in the garage, but I'll keep one in here to use to um, put out on the patio. Here's Nancy. She's got to check everything out. Okay, Nancy. 
Look at what's going on here. I have a few helpers. Three helpers, Sammy, Nancy, and Ziggy. They want to know what's going on. Guys, these are crunchies for the birds outside, okay? These are some crunchies for the birds, not for cats. Okay, that's it. You don't need to eat anything. Ziggy's trying to eat a peanut. Ziggy just took a peanut. Today, I also went to a supermarket that I don't usually go to. I went there specifically to get this canned food. This is the canned food that Eva loves so much. It is the um, Nature's Promise Free Country. Um, it's chicken dinner and gravy. I also get them salmon dinner and gravy. And then today I got them this chicken and whitefish dinner. This one's a pate. The others are, they're kind of like shreds, but these have good ingredients. Um, the reason I stopped buying these is because they're a little high in carbs for the cats. Um, but these don't have potatoes in them. They only have potato starch. So the only iffy ingredient in here is potato starch. But I figure if, you know, I mix this with a very low carb diet, it'll all even out. And then this one um, had nothing in it. It had no potatoes, no potato starch. Um, the only thing this has is a little bit of carrageenan in this one. The other ones don't have carrageenan, but it only has carrageenan as like the second to last ingredient. So they're not a fan of this pate as much as the shreds. Um, but I got this because I figured, you know, they're $1.09 a can. How could that price be beat? It can't be beat. And I figure for them to have this as a snack along with their low-carb homemade food, it should be fine because, you know, at the end of the week, it'll all balance out. Good morning, Boo. This is where Boo slept last night. He's still not using his bed. He prefers this rolled-up blanket which is fine. I opened the window a little while ago. It's open about three inches. He might be cold now because it's quite cold outside. This is what's going on outside. So thankfully we did not get any snow overnight, which is wonderful. I'm hoping we don't get any snow today. Also, it doesn't feel like we're going to get snow, but I could be wrong. But right now it feels good that it's cold, but it doesn't have that feeling of like snows on the way. This is the camera that I've been using to film the vlog videos with since last summer. I purchased this back in July. I think it was on a Prime Day sale. No sooner than I get my recovered hard drive back and I transfer all of my data over to another hard drive for backup, then this camera decides to not work anymore. So what's going on with this camera is when I turn it on, the lens comes out and then it retracts. Then it comes out again and then it retracts. And then I get a message to turn power off then on. And when I do that, it just does the same thing over and over and over again. So it's caught in this weird cycle. I don't know if something is wrong with the autofocus or the lens, but I haven't even had it a year. So yesterday I contacted technical support from Sony and they tried to troubleshoot it. And they said that there's nothing that they can do that I have to send it in to have it repaired. And they you know, gave me a return authorization number and told me how I need to package it up, what I need to include with it. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, they said it should be covered under warranty, but if for some reason it's not covered under warranty, then they'll let me know how much it is to repair it. And these are not cheap cameras. Um, these sell for around $750. So even if it costs two or $300 to repair, that'll definitely save me like $500 on purchasing a new one. So I'm going to send it in and see what happens. But then that means I need to find another camera to shoot the vlogs with. Right now, I am filming this with my iPhone. When I've tried filming vlogs in the past, I had a lot of problems with the audio. 
but this is a different phone than the phone I was using. So maybe the audio is different on this one. I don't know. Um, right now, it's just the easiest thing for me to do is to shoot it on this phone and to see how it goes. So if you notice a difference in the footage, if you notice a difference in the sound, that's why, because this camera is broken. I'm going to try filming on the phone and I don't know, we'll see what happens. You okay with that, boo? Here's Stella, Splash, and Simba, and they've been playing with their electronic toys. But they turn off after a little while, so I'll turn them back on. Let's see what's going on downstairs. Good morning, Sammy. So last night, the cats had homemade raw food. It was turkey. Then they had some canned food, the canned food that I purchased at a local supermarket that they haven't had in a long time. They had two cans of that split seven ways. And then I gave them each a teaspoon of crunchies. There's Ziggy. Hey, Goldie. There's little Eva. Hey, little Eva. I'll turn their electronic toys on. Then I have to go upstairs and finish getting ready for my day. Hey, Ziggy. You gonna come up for pets? Okay, I'll give you some pets. Ziggy loves pets and she loves being brushed. Right, Ziggy? Right, Ziggy? Hey, Nancy. There's Eva. Every one of these cats has to headbutt all of the other cats on a daily basis, right? These guys, these guys are constantly headbutting each other, constantly. I put some of the new bird seed outside along with a bunch of the peanuts. It's starting to snow, but it's just a very light flurry. Hopefully it stays this way. Look at what's happening here. If I don't want to turn this game on, I just put a laser pointer on it. Who needs an electronic game when you have a laser pointer?
It's 10.30 a.m. All the cats have been fed. And here's Boo. He's settling in for the day. This is his favorite spot. There's some birds flying around outside that he's looking at. They finally found the bird seed that I put outside. So he's going to take a bath. <laughs> and then he's going to lay down here and relax. Boo is so funny. He goes through these phases where he has a favorite spot in the house. And he just loves to be in that spot. It's 8.30 p.m. I just came downstairs to vacuum up and clean up a little bit before I give the cats their dinner. Look what I just found. Somebody vomited on the cat tower. I have never had a cat vomit on this cat tower before. Even when I had the previous cat tower, which was the same exact cat tower as this, this just makes me want to vomit and it's not going to be fun to clean up at all. It actually starts way up here, one level higher, and then works its way down to this level and this level. I cleaned up the cat tower. It looks much, much better now that it's cleaned and the cats are all eating their dinner. Today we're having chunky beef with a hard boiled egg and a can of sardines mixed in. We're having a little bit of freeze dried chicken on top. This is like one of their new favorite meals. And yesterday I bought a London broil that I need to chunk up and freeze for them. I cut it into chunks and then I put it in freezer containers and I freeze it in meal-sized portions. And today I was in Trader Joe's and I bought them some turkey cutlets, which I'm going to cut up also and freeze in meal-sized portions. So next week they'll have beef, they'll have turkey, they'll have chicken. And I also got them um, some bags of commercial raw food. So we're set for food for next week. It is 10.15 p.m. I'm here with Boo, Simba, Stella, and Splash. And did you see Nancy walk by? Nancy was back there. She just walked by. I gave her a crunchy cup because the cats are having crunchies in their coffee filters. Well, they get a fresh coffee filter every day. Okay, now Nancy's walking around. Just going into Boo's room. That's fine. I think once she hears a crunchy container, she's going to be looking for crunchies. Notice how the cats sit near their little plate. Okay. Is everybody ready? You ready? So they've been getting two teaspoons of crunchies at night. I really don't want them to have crunchies, but to be honest, I really enjoy getting a good night's sleep. And when I give them two teaspoons of crunchies, then they don't bother me. They don't wake me up. They don't wake me up in the morning. So it's a trade-off. And they have been getting Origin Crunchies, which... I think are some of the healthiest crunchies on the market, if not the healthiest crunchies. And they're made out of 90% animal products. And for cats who are obligate carnivores, uh, that's what we want. We want a high percentage of animal products and we don't want it to be plant-based. You ready, Simba? You ready, Stella? The cats are having their first teaspoon of crunchies. Nancy's walking around the house. I don't know if she's going to come and get any. They're standing there looking at each other. The one problem with these coffee filters is that they slide around on the floor. I have not put a rug back yet. I've been thinking about putting rugs back um, because I took the rugs out when um, we had the flea issue. And, oh, look, Stella's done with hers already. And probably this weekend I might put rugs back. I have a rug in the hallway that's meant for Boo's room. I haven't put it in Boo's room yet. I also have a rug for the hallway, like a long runner downstairs in my storage room. And I have a rug for here downstairs in my storage room. I stocked up at Christmas Tree Shop before they went out of business. So, okay, is everyone done? Boo still has a few. Boo, you still have a few. 
So that's what they get. That's their second teaspoon, and that's it.